Cars can be an expression of the time and of your personality. And some people in this business are rock stars, legends. I have Gene Winfield here with me. Good morning, Gene. Good morning, Kelly. I'm so Kelly. glad you're here with me. Thank you. I'll tell you what, I've had to push people away to get an interview <laughs> with you today here at Autorama 2020. Yeah. And because you have such a long career, a legendary career in this field. Yes. customizing cars yes and that's true. not just for your own customers but right. for movie sets yes yes tell me a little bit about your career well I uh, you know let me tell you how I got my foot in the door at uh, Hollywood okay I told I, I put my how old were you at this time oh I don't know probably 21 or okay so. but anyway <laughs> I, I put my car called the reactor on a trailer on, on an open trailer and I towed it from Modesto, California to L.A., which is about 340 miles. So I got there. I didn't know anybody anywhere. And so I found Fox Studio. <laughs> and so I towed up to the, to the gate and I conned them a little bit. I said, I heard the transportation department wants to see that car. <laughs> and they said, OK, they, go down you here. You cold call them and you lied to them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> A great fib. It's a great fib. <laughs> so, so he said, "Go down here and turn left, and and uh, so forth." So, uh, so I got in there, mm -hmm. and then um, this this the transportation coordinator, he uh, made me aware of all the other people in the studios and nice. gave me addresses and phone numbers and everything. Oh. So for three days, I hauled that car around. <laughs> I I got pictures of Bill Cosby sitting in it, nice. Michael Landon and uh, Smothers Brothers and all kinds of people so fun. which which I hardly knew who they were but uh, but it was great and, and just, what a brave thing to do what a yep. brave thing to do roll back a little bit and tell me what was the very beginning of your love of cars well when I was in high school I was drawing pictures and things like that instead of studying like I was supposed to <laughs> <coughs> I didn't and you know, a lot of times we used to put uh, the little books, you know, the, what we yes. call little pages. Yes. We put those in a history book, uh -huh. and we'd be supposedly reading the history book, but we're we're You're looking. You're drawing at, cars. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, <clears throat> which reminds me, the first time I met Jay Leno. Oh. I was at a car show, outdoor car show, and uh, he goes walking through the parking lot. So I walked up to him and I said, "Hi, Jay." I said, "I'm Gene Winfield, custom car guy." He backs up and he looks at me, you dirty so-and-so. He says, you get me in trouble because of the history book thing. Oh, no. Yes. You got so, him in trouble. So for the next two years, every time I would see him, he would mention that to somebody else. Hey, this is a troublemaker right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so you were a young kid. You were, you were cranking on cars back then. But yeah. I think another thing that's really part of your legacy is the paint. Is the well, paint, custom see, paint. First, first I was racing. Okay. And I was building flathead engines, mm -hmm. and I was port and relieving them and doing all kinds of stuff. And, and I bought stuff from Edelbrock, and, and uh, Phil Wyan was a friend of mine, and uh, people like that. So I did a lot of racing, street, street racing, and then I finally went to uh, El Mirage first time, oh, yeah. and I, I stopped at SoCal Speed Shop, and Alex Exidius was the owner of SoCal. And uh, Alice is still with us. He's 97, I think wow. now. Young guy. But, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he had a guy working for him, and uh, and he told me how to set up the tires, how much pressure, and and the jet size for the carburetors and all that. And uh, <clears throat> so I said, well, how fast do you think I I will go? Well, with your gear ratio and your tires, you should go 120. Well, you know, I was hoping for 110 or any anything like that. In fact. I was in the Century Toppers Club, which I created, and uh, theoretically you're supposed to go over 100 to, to be in the club. Okay. So, <laughs> but anyway, I uh, went to the, <laughs> excuse me, went to the Dry Lakes, El Mirage Dry Lake, and uh, he says, by the way, he says, if, if, he says, keep your foot in it when you get going, you might hit a bump or something. Well, I hit the bump and, and I was in the air. I, oh, I thought, no. yes. Over 100 miles an hour in yeah. the air. So I backed off of it, and then it made me mad. I put my foot in the carburetor again, and uh, and I turned 112. <laughs> so then I, I got right back in line without doing anything. Oh, wow. Didn't change nothing. Yeah, and I turned 121.7. <laughs> so that's fantastic. It was just fabulous. Well over 100. Yes. That's fun. It was fabulous. I guess it's kind of like your theory now. No matter what, keep your... <laughs> 
Pedal to the metal, That's even if you right. hit a bump, right? <laughs> exactly right. Oh my goodness. You've had a lot of experience with people in Hollywood. Tell me some more. You said Bill Cosby, the Smothers Brothers, some of these big names. Yeah. But Jay Leno. But you've also Blade Runner. Tell me a little bit about that whole well, set. The time I, I uh, <clears throat> when Blade Runner. What year was this? Do you remember? Uh, 79, 1979 and 80. 1980. So they called me because uh, I had already been doing a few things with different studios. And so the art director called me. He knew uh, who I was. And he said, I want you to bid on, on, uh, on this movie. Okay. So they wanted 54 cars. Could you imagine building 54 cars from scratch? Really? The whole bodies, everything. So, and I knew that they'd never be able to afford it. But I had to bid it. Yes, so, you wanted the job, I'm sure. Yes. yes. So <clears throat> I had to hire an accountant to help me <laughs> to help me punch the numbers, and uh, so it took me almost three months to bid it. Oh. And so then, <clears throat> they uh, when they got ready to do it, I, like I say, I, I knew they wouldn't be able to afford the whole 54 cars. See, they, what he, the director wanted was a, a traffic jam. Oh, I see. see. He wanted this traffic jam of all futuristic cars, and uh, which we did. But um, they changed the number, and so they had me, they start out by having me make uh, 27 cars. So then I got the contract, and I started building them and, and producing them and so forth. And then they changed after a month or so, they changed and they changed it to 25 cars oh. instead of 27. Same money, sure. but, oh, but, diff but different cars. Sure. See, so just more, two more of this and one less of that, you know. So, about the so, same then for you. So, it was all worked out great. Yeah. So, I, did you set up the system? Well, I had to, I had to rent two other shops. Okay. So, I, I had three shops going. Yeah. And I, and I finally hired up to 50 people. Oh, wow. 50, 50 people. I, I hired everything that walked. <laughs> <laughs> Good and bad, right? Yeah. And, uh, so we were working 50 people in three different shops, and we, we got them cranked out. And you had concept drawings, because obviously they wanted yeah. futuristic cars. Yeah, speaking of the drawings now, they were drawn by Sid Mead. Okay. Sid Mead, who I became friends with. Yes. I knew who he was. I had met him in Detroit a long time ago. and uh, Tell me who Sid so Mead is. Sid Mead is a, uh, was. He just died uh, two months ago. Goodness. And, uh, but he's the greatest futuristic designer that they ever ever had. He just draw all kinds of crazy things, you know, and and he has he has about seven books out. Yeah. I, I have all of them but one, and in in the books he even has uh, like futuristic dogs and and, <laughs> he and was horses. The future, right? Oh yeah, I mean it's, it was unbelievable, Wonderful. Wonderful. unbelievable. This so guy. So I'm sure it was magical working with a guy like that. Yes, it was great. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ridley Scott was the uh, uh, director of, of Blade Runner. Sure. And he was real particular. He come over, and uh, he we were working on the bottom of, of a car called the Spinner, okay. one of the the major police car. We call it the Spinner. Right. So, so he had me detail the bottom of it, just going crazy. Well, in in the movie, you don't see it at all. It's in the rain. <laughs> it's in the rain. It goes to and, show, right? Yeah. <laughs> you work all that time on the bottom of that car, and never even see it in the movie. <laughs> what was it like working with Harrison Ford? You said you met him quite a few times. Yeah, he was good. He was uh, he was a pretty cool character. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I met him and, and talked with him in, in between takes, you know, and things like that. So it was good. I met a lot of uh, important people, a lot of actor and actresses, and I never I never thought to get their autograph. <laughs> You know, they should have wanted your autograph. Yeah, now, <laughs> now they're all gone. Oh, you know? shoot, yeah. So I, I didn't get anybody's no. autograph. And well, I think back then you were a big shooter yourself. Well, you I were was, working hard on the set yeah. and you're focused. You're focused. I, right? uh, I met Lauren Green. I designed a car for him. And then uh, to, he was going to build it separately. And I made five trips to Hollywood to Lauren Green's house. And by the way, he had two white German Shepherd dogs. We did white. Pure white. Wow. I've never seen them. Beautiful animals. Beautiful. He was a nice yeah. guy. Uh, yeah, very nice guy. Nice guy. And so we, uh, I, I bid on building him that car, and he, and he finally okayed it after we changed the design several times. And then he says, "Okay, I'll uh, you get in touch with my attorney on Monday, and we'll get you some money so you can get started." Good. So I called his attorney on Monday. His attorney talked him out of it. <gasps> Yeah, oh, he said. Shoot. He said, "Put your money in real estate." Oh. <laughs> so, 
darn it all. <laughs> really tore me up. I would have been mad too. <laughs> yeah. Called that turning back up. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you talk about the industry itself of customizing and really showing your personality in yeah. a vehicle, tell me what some of your philosophy is. Well, uh, my philosophy was and still is that I can do anything. I can build anything. Anybody can give me a drawing of, of whatever it is, and I can I can construct it and build it and and, uh, and make it run or drive or whatever. Yeah. You know. The, well, obviously, since you were building cars that were really never, they were future. They yeah. were of the future. And you uh, were building something that was you may like, never even see. Like um, Back to the Future too. I built one of the DeLoreans that they lifted to fly. Interesting. It, it only, only weighed 600 pounds. I, I borrowed a, a DeLorean from a friend of mine, took a complete fiberglass mold off of it, okay. made a fiberglass DeLorean, and made it look like stainless steel, Yes. and then uh, and made the tires r fold under yes. so they could lift it to fly. I remember the movie. I was, yeah, both of these movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun. I bet. I think the dreaming, the, the fact that you were able to dream, really get out of the box, yeah. and create something brand new. Yeah. Tell me, we're right behind us, we have a whole bunch of people working here at Autorama, and you're able to teach them some things. Yes, we 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 chopped this car. Now this this is an old Ford, a 1950 Ford that Bill Hines started. Yeah. Now Bill Hines was a. Tell a, me about uh, Bill Hines. Well, he was a, a legendary guy, yeah. just like me, and uh, you know, at actually at at oh in the, in we'll say up until the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, there was only a few people doing this throughout the whole world. And he's from Detroit, right? Yes, he All was right. from Detroit. So Bill Hines had built this car up to a point, and then somehow it got away, and and got away from him, and and it was lost. Yes. Nobody knew where it was for many years. Oh yeah, they this find, car behind they, us they got spoke, lost. Yes, and wow. they, they found it, found it in a some kind of a swamp. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. somebody's back swamp. So, yeah, so okay. it's all. It's all the back bumper and everything's all rusted out. But, so a friend of mine found it, found it and bought it, and uh, and he's had it sitting in his yard for oh I don't know probably five or ten years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we needed a car to chop in the show here, so I talked him into chopping <laughs> this one. Let's do it here. And somebody had put a four-door roof on on this car, which was a two-door car, so it was all messed up. Yeah. So we changed a lot of stuff and and then. My my good buddy Kent uh, here, he's from Kentucky, and so he's been doing most of the work because I was in the hospital last week and oh so I've been weak and so I haven't done a, a whole lot of work at this time. You've traveled all around the world. Everywhere. I, Tell me some of your favorite things you've done around the world. Well, I went to Finland and Sweden. I've been to Sweden four or five times and and uh, and uh, <laughs> in Finland. What did you do while you were there? Well, I worked on the car, chopped the car. So I chopped the car in Finland uh, three years in a row. <laughs> and uh, But then I, I got uh, uh, in, in Finland, I broke my hip. Oh, shoot. I, I, was, at, I was at the, uh, the uh, dance floor, mm -hmm. and, and Billy Gibbons was a guest there, ZZ Top. And so I was sitting there uh, waiting for Billy to come back in the hotel, we were going to go up on the stage and present an award to one of the local people. And uh, so I had to go to the bathroom, so I cut across the dance floor at oh, night. Yeah. It's pitch black, and I tripped over that thing that they have the cords. Oh, shoot. The cords under yes. it. Yes. And uh, tripped over that, and my girlfriend, <coughs> girlfriend fell on top of me and broke my hip. Darn then, it. then while I was in the hospital, I got pneumonia. So I was in the hospital 24 days. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> and then somehow uh, my office guy said, uh, let's, let's create money uh, to get Gene home. Yes. So they, they created this fund. GoFundMe. GoFundMe. Go yeah, and then so in three days, <laughs> in three days they developed $78,000. Wow. And so I flew home on a medical flight. Oh my goodness, it feel was, the love. It was wonderful. Feel the love of your fans, right? It's oh, unbelievable. Oh, goodness <laughs> sakes. That is unbelievable. wonderful love for you, right? <clears throat> you go around the world, though. I mean, all this experience that you have, and you're able to teach it. Yeah. But you pack it in there. Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know. Years, I, decades I, of experience. I, yeah, I absorb, you know, everything, and, and I remember I have a good memory. Yes. And so then 
I do I do metalworking classes okay. all over. I've, I've done them in England and Australia and all over. And in fact, one time I went to Australia and they lined up two cars for me to chop. But then while I was there, I chopped another one. So I chopped three cars, three cars, three cars in two weeks in, <laughs> oh, in Australia. So, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And that's a short amount of time. They, um, they build a beautiful Cadillac over there mm. uh, called the King Cad. And um, they flew me over there to paint it. Yes. And uh, it took six years to build this car. Oh my gosh. And it had over $600,000 in it. No pressure. Yeah. No pressure. So I, I painted <laughs> it, paint for, it for three days. I painted oh that, that can and it was beautiful. It what still color? exists. Purple. Purple. Shade, shades of purple. One of my favorites. Yes, yeah. I do love purple as well. Yeah. I love purple. What are some things that you'd like to share with people, uh, the techniques or... You know, other guys that are wanting to do this, what are some of the things well, you like to leave them with? Well, the main thing I, I always tell a bunch of young people is that when you get an idea, stick with it and stay with it, even though it's going to be hard knocks and things that maybe don't go right. And so if, if you goof up a piece of metal, just throw it away and start with start another, another piece. One. It's a matter of just following through mm -hmm. and getting it done. And mm -hmm. so I always tell them to no matter what, just follow it through and it'll pay off. One of the things that I think that's really interesting in your techniques, we're seeing a lot of old style um, work here. Mm -hmm. but what about new technology? How has that played a part in your career? Well, the, the technology of the new tools and, sure. and equipment and the welders and things, they're all way far better than when, when I started. I still do a lot of gas welding yeah. and almost nobody does that anymore. <laughs> but I teach people how to gas weld and, and hammer welds and things like that. And it's, a, it's an old style uh, process, but it still works, sure does. works the best. Yeah. Now when you were doing these futuristic cars in Blade Runner, and now fast forward this many years, mm -hmm. did you see any styles that you created in Blade Runner? Do you see any of those styles driving around the road now? Oh yeah. Like what, yeah. what manufacturers copied some of that style? Well, uh, Chrysler did some and, and uh, Ford in fact, I did. I did several. I did. Uh, I did nine show cars for Ford. You did. Ford Motor Company. Okay. Yeah. Over a period of eight years, I did nine separate show cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> what they would do is they would give me what they call an engineering prototype. Now this is a car that they created with a bunch of parts and pieces, and every part on that car has a number mm -hmm. and a different color. Okay. So then they test with it. They go out to the track and they test and. Uh, they keep changing these parts before you ever see it in production. Sure. So uh, this one particular uh, Fairlane, they flew the car from Detroit to San Francisco okay. and then trucked it to Modesto. And then I had, excuse me, I had to build a special room for this car so that the public couldn't see it because it's a year before announcement oh, time. Oh gosh, yeah, okay, top see? secret. Yes. Near so I did, yeah, so I did that, and then that that particular car. See, that was in 19. Uh, uh, let me see, 1965. Okay. And uh, so I worked on it for three months, and then give it to Ford, and so they had this new show car, and they showed it in all the new car shows, mm -hmm. New York, San Francisco, Los right. Angeles, like that, and then. Since the, this, these cars that I started with are what they call the engineering prototype, there's no serial number. So they theoretically can never be sold. Right. So Ford Motor Company gave this car to a dealer to make a race car out of it. Oh. Well, they didn't. They pulled the engine out and used the engine and, and shoved the car out in the weeds and, and it sat there for several years. And this guy found it and he's a Fairlane nut. I mean, really a Fairlane yeah. nut. He, knew, he know, knows all about them. In fact, you can give him a part number, any any Ford part number, and he'll tell you what year and what it's for. <laughs> That's but it, crazy. It, it is. Did he end up buying it? So yeah, he oh. got it. He got it from the dealer. So he's in. He was in uh, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and uh, he took it there. And so he spent six years uh, reconstructing and and repairing and recreating this car. So it's exactly like it was when I did it. Wow. In fact, my my name was still in the rear bumper where they sent it to the chrome shop that said Gene Winfield. <laughs> and, uh, That's so, so fun. So he flew me to Minnesota to paint it, 
and then I found the upholstery and the steering wheel and, and the uh, shifter and everything, Perfect. all original for that oh. car. And so this just the very last Barrett Jackson in January, I was back there with him and, and went up on the block and, and we sold it for 215000 So. $215,000. Yes. That's quite an honor, Gene. Yes. Wasn't that quite was, an honor it, to see that really, car was, that you created was before back then? Yeah. You gonna teach me how to weld? Sure. It's all right. When you when you talk to the young kids, you were talking about not giving up. What's your philosophy? Every day is a school day, and I use that a lot. I have it on two two different T-shirts, and and I tell people that all over the world. Every day is a school day, and uh, I'll show you in a, in a few minutes my shirt with that on it. So when you say that every day is a school day, what do you mean? Well, you learn something new every day, no matter what it is. Whether, whether you're a, a young guy at, at 10 or 12 years old or if you're an older guy at 40 years old, if you just keep your eyes and ears open, you're going to learn something new every single day. doesn't matter whether it's construction or, or uh, uh, what it, if it's with food or whatever, but you, you learn something every single day. Keeps you young, doesn't it? Yeah. Every day is a school day. You said it, Jim. <laughs>